What up, Hope Biscuits? It's your girl Skitten, back at it again. First and foremost, I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you guys are staying safe and sanitized. Today, we return to extra history. I have really been feeling this channel lately. Um, if you guys have been keeping up at all, you know that I did the Vlad the Impaler series, their Queen and Zynga duology. Chavez and I um, have reacted to both their History of Coffee and History of Beer series. We're actually still in the midst of the History of Beer series. Suffice it to say, I really like this channel. I really vibe with this channel. So I found another series on here. It's about Eleanor of Aquitaine. It looks like it's about six videos or so. So I'm very excited about that. But if you have other series on their channel that you want me to check out, please do not hesitate to let me know because I always have an ear open for your guys' suggestions. I tell you at the end of every video to leave your reaction requests and recommendations down in the comments below. And I mean that shit. And you guys know that I am an obsessive who reads all of the comments. So I'm always reading your rec... Re your, so I'm always reading your requests and recommendations. Like every time, every time. I might not always do them. I might not always do them or do them in the, in the timely fashion that you guys would like, but I do always read them. I do always see them. So just know you are seen. Any who's ins, I'm super excited to see what this video has in store for us. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. April, 1137, Paris. Okay. King Louis the Fat is having a very Not up and Louis down sort fat. of day. First of all, he's mortally ill, which of course isn't great. But then a party arrives bringing awful news. William the 10th, Duke of Aquitaine, has died of an unexpected illness. Shit. They have his will, stating that his lands will go to his young daughter and that she is to be under King Louis's care until he can find her a husband. Interesting. Louis conveys his grief to the messengers until they leave when he bubbles over with joy because William's Duchy of Aquitaine is the largest, richest province in all of France. God, and whoever damn. marries this girl, what's her name? Uh, oh, Eleanor or whatever. Yeah, they're gonna get the whole shebang. Mm. And it just so happens that Louis has the perfect husband for this land deed and address. Within hours, he's made arrangements to marry Eleanor to his own heir, Louis VII, Damn. winning a wife for his son and Aquitaine for the crown, mm -hmm. though the son would manage to lose them both. Ooh. On July 25th, 1137, not even four months after losing her father, the teenage Eleanor stood next to Louis VII at Bordeaux Cathedral. So, question, just question and this is obviously something I could look up but I'm not going to do it right now in the middle of the video when you say teenage are we talking 17 18 19 or 13 14 15 which which one I feel like I know but I'm just I would just you know some clarification exchanging wedding vows with the heir to the French throne who was this new husband she must have wondered well in short he was a 17 year old boy who was smitten with her but also deeply mismatched personality wise Aww. louis grew up thinking his older brother philip would become king but that changed after philip tragically hilariously brutally died when a horse tripped over a pig now i know what you're thinking how absolutely awful matt you uh don't happen to have a picture of this melancholy event do you oh yeah, oh Anyway, before oh. the porcine assassin leapt from a dung heap and murked Philip, yeah, it also came out of a dung heap, Louis was bound for the church and educated in a monastery, making him a very, very religious young man who did not have much experience with women outside of his family. Mm -hmm. But who was Eleanor by contrast? Well, it's hard to know, because we know little about her early life, not even when she was born. We think she was married at age 13, but she could have been a year younger or older. A baby. Okay, but he's also a baby, so... Also, I think about I think about this a lot because of how royals specifically, like highborn people specifically operated. Children were still children, obviously. But like they also weren't because of the things that they were expected to learn um, and know and be responsible for. Right. Um, and I'm not. I'm not making any statements as to whether that's right or wrong or whatever. Like, I'm not making any moral judgments here, but it was just different. Like at the age of five, ki kids knew like four different languages and how to like, you know, by the age of 10, knew how to run a household. Like it was very different. 
We do know that she received a good education, that she spoke Latin, and that she was very much a person shaped by her home and family. Mm -hmm. Aquitaine was in the south of France, a rich and beautiful place with its own dialect, where relationships tended to be warmer and more affectionate than in the north. She also came from a family known for its passions. Mm. For instance, her grandfather, William IX, was a poet who was famous for having painted his mistress's face on his shield and moving her into his castle. Oh my God. So essentially, they were a bit of an odd couple and not the kind that works. But Imagine that your man moves his side piece in and paints her on his... Oh, I would be hot. I would be hot. I would be hot. And just to be clear, I understand relationships work differently back then. Nobody wants their mis their husband's mistress flaunted in front of them. Nobody at any point in history has ever wanted that. Even if you accepted the fact that, you know, your man was going to have a mistress or even several, you still wanted to be the top bitch in the household. But they'd have to make it work. Because less than a week after their wedding, Louis VI died, making this he mismatched what teenage he couple the king and queen of France, and yep. Eleanor, arguably the most powerful woman in Europe. As queen consort, Eleanor moved to Paris and quickly found it inhospitable. Though Louis refurbished his palaces to please his southern bride, the intelligent and vivacious Eleanor, who had a fondness for fashion and often spoke her mind, clashed with both her mother-in-law and the mm. abbots who clustered around Louis as his advisors. Also, she was in a precarious spot because Eleanor had one job, to have a son, and she wasn't having any kids at all. Mm. Yeah, there were issues. Eleanor appears to have had at least one miscarriage, and oh. she was still quite young when they were married. Also, Louis himself might not have had his head in the game. See, the medieval church had a lot of rules about when couples shouldn't be baby-making. Right. For example, saints' days and religious festivals were out, as well as times in a woman's menstrual cycle, yep. which narrowed the window considerably. Now, most practical royal couples ignored this, but the hyper-religious Louis may have not. Though in fairness, there were quickly other things preoccupying his mind. You know, like fighting with the Pope. That began in 1141, when the Pope appointed an archbishop in one of Louis' cities that the king had previously vetoed. You the result nah. was a standoff, where Louis denied the archbishop entry, and in retaliation, the Pope banned Louis from certain church rites. Oof. Then, shortly thereafter, Eleanor started urging Louis to allow her younger sister to marry one of France's most important nobles. The catch being that this prospective groom was already married, and Eleanor's sister already promised to the Duke of Champagne. Oh my god, the Duke Eleanor! sheltering that archbishop. You messy Louis bitch. saw this request as a win-win-win. Help a friend, please his wife, and mess over a rival. Uh -huh. Except it led to the Pope excommunicating the new couple, and Louis going to war with Champagne. And when Louis ravaged one of the Duke's cities, he accidentally burned down a church where <gasps> 1,200 innocents were sheltering, no. which led to a papal condemnation. Eleanor decided to intervene, taking one of Louis's avid advisors to task for not pleading the king's case with the new pope. Girl, what do you want him to do? He just killed 1,200 people. What are you talking about? Okay, okay, Eleanor. I was with you on the whole girl boss thing, but... You might have girl bossed a little too close to the sun here. I, oh. Also, I just keep remembering that she's like, she's 14, 15, maybe. They're like, oh, she's not having any kids. Yeah, she's a baby herself. When he blew up at her in return, she apologized, saying that she was so irritable because she didn't have children, which was probably true enough, but also could have been a sneaky way to go nuclear, make her point, and then walk away with the abbot's sympathy. Mm -hmm. The abbot eventually did intervene. And by the next year, the papal relationship had been repaired, and she had a daughter. But Louis's conscience had never recovered from the church burning. Yeah. And when the crusader kingdom of Edessa fell, and the pope called for a second crusade to win it back, the king volunteered to wash away his sins. Oh. It was the first time a king had gone on crusade, and Eleanor decided she'd come too at the head of her duchy's troops. It was on crusade when things really started to fall apart. Okay. Louis argued with the Holy Roman Emperor about which route to take, and the Byzantine Emperor, while complimentary of Eleanor, was unfriendly. Louis also okay. insisted on acting like a pilgrim on the journey, meaning not being near women. A plus move for a troubled marriage. Also, do you not understand that it is your job, like it is our job to provide an heir? Sir, if you don't, if you don't turn on the Marvin Gaye and turn down the lights, then disaster struck. Eleanor's contingent was leading the column, and when they were supposed to stop at the top of a mountain and camp, they decided to carry on to a better spot. Mm. Louis with the rear guard, and supposedly weighed down by Eleanor's baggage, lagged behind, and the line stretched. When Turkish archers started firing from oh, the rocky slopes, shit. it was essentially a massacre, blamed on Eleanor's contingent. 
so the couple was already on bad terms right. when they entered Antioch, a city ruled by Eleanor's dashing uncle, Raymond the Handsome. There, the uncle and niece renewed their friendship, with the familial warmth common in Aquitaine, speaking in their own dialect that Louis couldn't understand. Louis got jealous, and rumors spread that Eleanor was having an incestuous affair with Raymond. And this wedge quickly went from personal to political. When Raymond wanted Louis to attack Aleppo, and Eleanor joined his lobbying effort, in a public break with his wife, Louis opted to go on a pilgrimage to Jerusalem instead, wow. dragging her along as almost a prisoner. It was then she first mentioned the idea of an annulment on the grounds of consanguinity that they were too closely related. Oh. The crusade itself was an expensive disaster. With crusader forces broken and the couple barely speaking, they got on separate ships to head home. Attacked by pirates and separated in a storm, Eleanor briefly thought Louis was dead, but he wasn't. Damn. On a subsequent visit to the Pope, she again suggested annulment, but instead, the Pope offered marriage counseling. Which, just to be <laughs> clear, consisted of showing them a great bed he'd made himself, hung with nice tapestries all around. Ooh, look how bouncy! Why don't you two just spend the night in it? Eh? 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 They did and had another daughter, God which was a relief for Eleanor, because at this point she was looking for a way out. And her strongest argument was that in 15 years of marriage, she'd only had girls. If she'd had a boy, she'd be trapped. And because their marriage agreement said that Aquitaine was hers until the two had a male heir, now she could walk away with her duchy. Right. Meeting a son, worrying for his dynasty, and now barred from Eleanor's bed, even the Pope's sexy time bed, Louis consented, and Eleanor got her divorce. Congrats. Though she had to agree to never see her daughters again, Damn. as they were Louis's property. Now 28, the former Queen of France was beautiful, young, still had her enormous duchy, and was once again single, okay. even if only for a little bit. Within eight weeks, she'd be married again to Henry II, a Oof. brash, passionate young man, 10 years her junior, who was also the future king, the king of, of England. England. That's the part that I know about. That's the part that I'm aware of because y'all know, y'all know your girl's a little Anglophile. So join us next week for more wearing gowns and collecting crowns as Eleanor takes the English throne. And you know that I will for sure be seated I will be sat for that episode. I'm very excited, very excited about this. I did not know though that she had to leave behind her babies. I had no idea. I wonder what happens to them. I hope we learned like what happens to them later. I'm so excited. I'm super stoked about starting this series. Also make sure you guys keep an eye out for the tier zoo video that Chavez and I are going to be recording. And we have some other content that's gonna be coming out. So just, you know, if you don't have those notification bells clicked, you should you should click it. I would if I was you, I would click. I need to stop messing with this thing. Any who's in, don't forget to leave your reaction requests and recommendation down in the comments below. And other than that, peace out, hope biscuits. It's it's getting lit. <laughs>